Dr. Kim, why do you think so many men struggle to lead spiritually in their marriage? You know, there's probably a lot of different reasons. I think a lot of guys that I talk to just feel like they're not equipped. I think a lot of times we feel like our wives are probably a little ahead of us spiritually, which I think is probably true in a lot of ways. You know, I think our wives sometimes just that becomes more important to them at a certain time. And so they, they really spend more time in that, or maybe they're in Bible studies and we're not. And so I think sometimes we feel a little intimidated. We, I don't think we're going to say we are, but when guys talk to me, it does not feel equipped. I think there's also that fear of failure then. So what if I do it and she thinks I messed it up or I don't do it right or all those kind of things. And then I think the other thing, I think for a lot of guys, it's not a priority. It's just, mm. they don't understand what God really meant there to lead spiritually. And they may think, well, I hear about that maybe, but, but you know, I, I'm, I'm busy. I just don't want to take the time to do that. Yeah. That's interesting. It's interesting that you mentioned that you feel like a lot of women can be like kind of a little bit more spiritually mature than men. Sometimes I think in the cases where that's true, I think one of the reasons that might be the case is because women are more relational than men yes. are. And you really oh, do yeah. like you grow in your relationship with God when you you walk it out in relationships and in community with other people. Like that's why God calls us to community and calls us to be a part of the church. Like one thing that Dylan says, that's a little like sometimes controversial is he really encourages people to find Christian community and almost more so than doing some of these other spiritual disciplines, like reading their Bible. Like he's like, if you're going to choose one, honestly, like get together with some friends who are biblically based as opposed to like reading your Bible, do both, you know, but he'll, yeah. he'll kind of say like priority wise, you might know, like, as far as your growth, like that's, what's going to grow you further, which well, is cool. it's how Jesus operated. I mean, he had his, his three and his 12 and then the other hundred and whatever. I mean, he community was important to him. You know, he didn't go around doing his ministry with just him or just one guy. So I think he set the example of how important community is. And I think too, the relational thing, I think of women just, they like to get together. And so if a woman says, Hey, I want to need to come to my Bible study or let's go to this Bible study. We were usually all in and guys, they say, you want to go to Bible study? And they go, mm, well, there's a football game on mm -hmm. or if, but if you say hey you want to come over and watch a football game yeah yeah let's do let's invite bill or bob so i mean i just think some of those things play a part into it too yeah that's interesting yeah and then i think um some other reasons that i kind of see men kind of struggling to lead spiritually is when they don't have a good example so if their father didn't set a good example it's like mm -hmm. they really have nothing to go off or, or maybe they just also don't maybe it's not just their family of origin maybe they don't have any examples in their life that they're seeing on right. a regular basis of of what that looks like practically so they don't really know where to start because of that yeah i think so too and obviously we know that your first textbook of how to be a man husband, father, all those kind of things is, is your dad. And so say you, dad was absent or say he just didn't lead or, you know, whatever that could be in there. Uh, I, I agree. There's a lot of us, a lot of people, I had a good example on that. And I feel more blessed every year just because I see more people that didn't have that. So I, I think that's a factor too. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So do you think that most husbands know they aren't leading spiritually? Or do you think that this is more of an issue that persists in marriage and the couples are disagreeing on what's actually happening? I think a couple of things. One, I thought, I think sometimes it's the definition of it. I think some guys think they are really leading spiritually if they get their family to church once a month. It's like, I have checked it off the box. That's what it means to lead spiritually. Well, that's how I define it. And that's what I've done. And then I think some people just don't want to do it. Some don't get it. And I think there is contention there. I, and I think that's hard though, because I've had wives that probably would say nag their husband to lead spiritually. And my experience is that pushes a guy farther away because of some of the things we already talked about. He may already be insecure and all those kind of things. So it just gives him an excuse. Well, I'm not going to do that, you know, because she's nagging me about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I kind of see it. I see it both ways. I see some couples that'll say, you know, where it is a disagreement, the husband feels like he is leading, but then I also definitely see the case where uh, the guy just doesn't think that it's a priority to lead. And so it's just like, oh yeah, I'm not doing that. Cause I don't, I don't think that's the thing I have to do or mm -hmm. they just aren't doing it, you know, and, and they, and they know it that they're not doing it. Yeah. And I think some wives probably have unrealistic expectations. I, th I think of a, a couple and I think he was really trying. I think overall he was probably doing a good job. He was not meeting her expectations because she wanted him to do Bible study with family every day. She got, I remember she got mad at him one year because it was the, uh, see you at the poll deal where you go to the high schools and you get around the poll and everybody prays. A bunch of dads went and he didn't go. And so it was like he had 
totally failed leading spiritually because of that. So I think as a wife, our wives need to be um, realistic with their expectations and to, and to talk to them about it. You know, what, what tell your husband what your expectations are so he can say, well, I can or can't do that. So at least you can begin to get on the same page with it and give your input. But also it's got to be him and him letting God lead him in that too. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And I think you bring up a, a really great point um, that we talked about a little bit in the last podcast as well of just, mm-hmm. yeah, I, th- I think this can feed into that of women having unrealistic expectations of, of what this looks like, because it doesn't look like them doing everything spiritual. It doesn't look like them being the only right. one to do spiritual things. It doesn't look like they have to initiate it every single time. That's yeah. not what leadership is. No, exactly. And so, you know, it's okay for the wife to read a Bible story to the children. It's okay for her to pray with them. It's okay for her to teach them. That's part of the role of doing that. And then, uh, yeah, I, I think expectations play a big part in it. Yeah. So what does it look like practically to lead spiritually? This is kind of the things that come to mind. I, I think praying for your family is huge. I think that connects you with God. I think allows God a chance to work through you, to speak to you, not audibly, but to impress things on your heart that you need to be doing for your family. Uh, and I think just it, it's just there's a lot of power in just praying for your family. I think for me, a lot of it is the kind of person you are. I think being a man of integrity is part of that. I, I think just that that your family sees you as a man of integrity, that your kids, your wife know that other people see you because you are that. I mean, to me, that's being where it's harder to catch some of the cast stones at you, I think is part of being a leader. We're not going to be perfect, but really trying to do things right. I think investing in your wife. I mean, what does she, what does she need from you today? What does she need spiritually from uh, same thing with your kids? What do they need from you? And then being a part of your church, being involved in your church, being active in a small group, um, praying with your kids, praying with your wife, praying with your family, um, making sure we're doing new version plans together. Um, doesn't mean you pick them all, you know, those kind of things. But I think it's just that overall watching over your family. It, yeah. It's just kind of in a spiritual way uh, from who you are down to the practical things like praying with them, doing Bible study with them, those kind of things. That, that was I mean, I think that's kind of the framework I try to operate in. Yeah, that makes sense. And it sounds like that's what like you do for your family and have have, have done for your family. And I think this is going to look a little bit different Absolutely. from family to family. And so the best way I know how to explain it is just to explain what my husband does, what Dylan does, because he does do a great job of leading our family spiritually. So, you know, he first and foremost is close to God himself. Like you were saying, yeah. he does read the Bible. He does pray um, and he pursues a, a relationship with Jesus on a regular basis. So he kind of leads the way in that. Another thing that he does real practically for us is he leads the way to our generosity. So when we want to increase our giving to the church, he's the one who's always bringing up those conversations um, and, you know, the practical uh, side of actually writing the check to the church um, or, or other generous ways, you know, like he sees opportunities and, you know, invites me into making those decisions with him, but right. invites me into praying, should we do this? Should we do that? Um, and just kind of make sure, like, you know, leads make sure that we are being generous with our finances and that we're not just thinking of ourselves, but that we're thinking of others. And then I think that, um, you know, a lot of times he'll, he, he initiates fasting together. That's something that's like not talked about a lot, not always done a lot, especially in like contemporary churches, but, you know, fasting is a great spiritual discipline. And so he has initiated that several different times throughout our marriage, which mm-hmm. has been cool. So like we'll fast for certain things because we'll be praying for certain things. And so we'll right. fast for a day or a couple of days. So that's been a cool way that he has kind of led us. And then he just encourages me in my own walk with God. So mm. he'll ask me questions or when I'm talking about anything, like a situation I'm dealing with with a friend or talking about something I'm struggling with, like he points me back to Jesus and he points me back to scripture. And that's really helpful because again, it just, and and he just kind of making sure that the foundation is God, you know, like he'll, he'll, he'll bring it back to where it needs to be, which I really appreciate about him. And then he talks to our kids about God. So like he'll bring up God in normal, everyday, ordinary conversations. And then he also just makes sure we're all at church. Um, on a regular basis, meaning every Sunday that we're open. Yep. And so he makes sure we're there. And then, but like, uh, but that's him, you know? And so I think for the husbands that are listening today, you got to figure out what does it look like for you to lead and just to encourage you to, 
it doesn't mean you do everything. So here's some things Dylan does not do for our family. He does not lead our prayer life. I do. I'm the one who says, like, let's pray together. And I'm usually the one who, like, opens the prayer uh, for our family and for our, like, individual time, which is him and I praying. Mm -hmm. Um, He does not lead family devotions. I do. I do a family devotional with the kids over breakfast usually each morning. And he has never done that. And even for, hot like, special holidays and stuff like that, when we want to, like, read the Easter story or read the Christmas story or, or explain to our kids about what Christmas means and why we celebrate our Easter. He doesn't lead that. I, I always lead that. Um, it's something that I enjoy. It's something that comes natural to me. And so why would he do it when I'm perfectly capable of doing it myself? And so, so I think that's, that's good to know too, for the husbands that are listening that like, it doesn't mean you have to do everything, like figure out what it means for you and your family. What can your wife do and what can you do to lead your family? Well, yeah. And I think you want to encourage your wife in the gifts she has. So what Dylan's kind of doing that, the things you enjoy, and obviously the, usually the things we enjoy are things that we're gifted in. So he's encouraging you in that and not allowing you. He just, it's just the way you guys work it. I think what, what I like best of what you said about Dylan is though it, 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 he is actively involved. You know, I, I think being a spiritual leader is not making sure your kids and your wife are in the family every Sunday morning in the car every Sunday morning and you send them off to church and then you go do what you want to do. It's like, that's not being a spiritual leader. You got to be in the car with them. It's not telling them to read their Bible and they never see you reading the Bible. So a lot of it is the example. And because Dylan doesn't do everything doesn't mean he's not leading. He's doing the things that that he values and feels good for and God's leading to do the family. And then he encourages you. You know, I can remember when we start asking in our prayer time with the family, we start asking the kids to share prayer requests in it and, and letting them pray for their, their friends. Well, I could have done that after that, but it was more powerful to empower them to do that and get used them used to praying out loud and caring about people and praying and then seeing God act. So a lot of that is just kind of that oversight deal yeah. that, that you kind of do there. The other thing I think you, um, as a guy, you don't ever... You, you can't be a spiritual and use it as a weapon. What I mean by that is so, so your wife um, loses it one day at you and you go, did you pray today? Don't ever do that. You know, that that's just that that's between her and the Holy Spirit and you can't be her Holy Spirit. And so I think it's really important as a spiritual leader, you leave the Holy Spirit's job to him and you do what God wants you to do as a spiritual leader to your family. And there's yeah. a big distinction there. Yeah, I think that's a great point and definitely something that, yeah, we we all need to hear. That's good. That's good. So, Dr. Graham, say someone is listening today and they want to start leading their family spiritually. Where do they start? Pray. I, yeah. I think it starts with you. And so, most guys are gonna that are listening. There may be some guys that are listening that are knocking it out of the park every day with this. Most of us don't. And I think it's always hard for most of us. I mean, it's like there's still times. I mean, we've prayed, I've talked about forever. We've prayed 99% of the days of our marriage. Does that mean every day I was just jumping up and down and I could not wait to pray with Nancy? No. Were there days I was? Yes. But other times I wasn't. So I need to pray. I need God to help my heart do that. I need God to equip me to do that. I need to God to to know that the, my confidence in doing this is God working through me. Nothing, I can't do it on my own anyway. And then I think, ask your spouse. What you don't want to do is say, I'm going to start leading spiritual and you make your own list. And she's saying, but these are my needs here. Ask her, what what does it look like to her? What would really encourage her, help her if you're leading spiritually? What are the things that she would love for you to focus on? And it may be kind of what Dylan does. Well, like, okay, so I do this, this, and this. And and you are so good at prayer and you're such a prayer warrior, your friends. I'm fine with you leading the prayer in our family. Why don't you continue to do that? I'll be there. I'll be a part of it. We'll talk about it. But you know, that's what I see. Just beginning to take that first step. I think it starts with God asking him to equip you and then just taking it a step at a time. And don't feel like you've got to get there in in a day or 30 days. I mean, it it will you will mature and grow over the time. I certainly did. God, Nancy was very patient with me. She was always ahead of spiritually. She still is. But she doesn't, it's not like she holds that over me and she's encouraged me. And then I've seen myself, God just grow me too. 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And I think that's an important note to remember that it takes time to sow yes. um, and it takes it takes even more time to reap what you have sown yep. um, and to see that fruit kind of come into fruition. And so I love that, Dr. Kim. That is all really, really good advice. I think another thing that I would encourage uh, men to do if they want to start this is to do it with another man. I mean, there's so much accountability and yep. encouragement with that. And I think you'll stick with it longer and do a better job if you do it with someone else. So get a Christian man, another guy at your church and say, hey, I want to do this, whether it's someone who's older and wiser and already doing it well that you want to learn from, or someone who's kind of on your same spiritual yeah. level of maturity and say, hey, let's let's do this together. Let's grow together in this. Let's figure this out together. And I think that community aspect of it is going to make it one more fun, but also you can learn from each other and the wisdom there is just going to be very, very valuable. I think so. And accountability. Your spouse does not need to be your accountability person in this. You can't say, hey, if I forget to pray, remind me to pray. I mean, maybe, but I mean, you really want to, she want, you want to lead her. And so having another guy that you guys sit down each week, hey, how'd you do? You you said you were going to pray with your wife every day this week. How'd you do? You know, and what, what kept you from doing that? So you've got him to process with. Uh, does that make sense? I mean, I, I think I, you just don't you know, want your wife to be your accountability person person in there. That's just, I don't think that's fair in that situation. Yeah. And I think you're going to, you're going to, you're more likely to succeed with accountability. Like that's just like, that's just true Absolutely. across the board when it comes to any kind of goal you're trying to accomplish with accountability, you are more likely to accomplish your goals. So get that accountability because that's just wisdom. It's just walking out truth. Yeah, it is. And, and I think what you said too, the relationship can, you may not think going into being accountable, a relationship is going to develop the way it can, but you'll be surprised how that relationship, because you're talking about really important things, you're talking about things that concern you and your relationship with God and him and his relationship with God that unites you, that really knits you together with somebody. And those are great friendships. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So what would you say to a man who feels like they don't have to lead their family spiritually or just doesn't want to? Well, I thought about how to say this, but basically I think it will, your marriage will never be all God designed it to be. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're selling your shelf short. I think you're, you're uh, not getting everything out of marriage that God designed it to be. God designed it to be that way. The first thing, you know, our, our core role as a husband is to lead and to lead spiritually. And so if we don't do that, it's going to affect us and it's going to affect our marriage. It's going to affect our spouse. And so I think we just sell ourselves short and, and I don't want to do that. I want everything out of my marriage that God has for me, which means at times I'm going to have to stretch myself. I'm going to have to do some things that are uncomfortable, but I've never regretted it. I've never done anything where I felt God said, this is what you need to do. Or I think your marriage would be better to do this. I, and where I've stretched myself that I didn't afterwards say, oh my gosh, that's exactly right. I'm so thankful I did that. Yeah, that's good. I love that you bring that up, Dr. Kim, because you're so right. Like you'll never for like regret time that you spent with God oh. and in his word. But I have heard from numerous people who say they regret not doing that, you know? Um, and so start, start somewhere, just, just make it happen. Yeah. It's like the old thing, you know, there's some guy on his deathbed saying, man, I spent too much time in God's word. I can't believe I wish my, no. Mm -mm. He's thankfully did because then he's got a piece at the, at the end of his life yeah, and, and he knows where he's going and he's left a legacy and yeah, that's what you want to, I mean, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think one of the things that I love to ask myself the most is like, what, what, what will you wish you have had done in five years? Like what decision would you wish you had made in five years? Cause it's really easy to think about the now and the temporary and the, you know, immediate satisfaction of like, sure. well, I'd, ra I'd rather watch Netflix than read my Bible, you know? But what, what, how will I wish I had spent my time in five years? Like, ask yourself that, like, you know, yeah. I, I think, I think as Christian men, you're going to want to have invested time in learning how to lead your family spiritually and learn how, learn God's word better and, and know him better. I, I think, I think that's what you're going to want. Well, and you're going to, you're going to see the fruit. You're going to mm -hmm. see the fruit of your labors. And yeah, I love watching Netflix, yeah. but at five years from now, it's not going to produce much fruit because I binge watched a new series that was on. Yeah. But it, but it will produce fruit that I spent time in God's word and I led my family. Yeah, that's good. So what would you say to the man that is tired of his wife begging him to lead spiritually? Um start start doing it. I mean, don't don't you know, I think as guys we can get we can just put that wall up, we can be stubborn, we can be she's not gonna tell me what to do, all that kind of stuff. And usually I think behind that is our insecurities a lot of times. So I think 
start. I think what you said is really good. Find somebody that you know in your church, ask your pastor, who's doing, who's doing this well that, that I could have lunch with. And then just kind of tell your story to that person and say, man, I have not led. I don't even know where to start. My wife wants me to, I have pushed back because I think she's nagging me about it, but I need to, I want to start it. And will you guide me through that? And then prayer. And I, and I think, I think instead of running from it and getting mad at your wife about it and trying to get her to quit begging you, nagging you, however you look at it, it's to say, man, if God designed us this way, if that's what he said, my role is, it's time for me to step into it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think it would be wise to do some soul searching with this, you know, Absolutely. is there a reason you're not wanting to lead spiritually and, and what is it kind of get to the root of that and don't be afraid to a a address any insecurities you have about it and be honest about that. And then, you know, just remember that if you're, if you feel like your wife is nagging you to, and begging you to lead and you're tired of listening to it, remind yourself of, of what it is that she's asking you to do and, and why, you know, clearly she wants this for, for you and for her yeah. and for the both of you. And it's a good thing to want, like, that's not a bad thing to just, to desire that. And so have grace with her for that. Um, you know, if you feel like she brings it up too much or whatever, and just really ask yourself, like, you know, why, why does she want this so bad? And why am I unwilling to do something about it? Kind of do some soul searching. Yeah. And I think that my thought, as you said that I think as guys, sometimes we don't feel like we're worthy. And I think we let our own sin get in the way of that. And I think the enemy then uses that against us to keep us from doing that. What I would say, we all sin. We all have different ways we sin. They're all the same in God's eyes. Don't let that be a barrier. God is right there to forgive you and to equip you. So don't think you are not good enough, worthy to lead. You are. God put you in that role. He's given you that role and he will equip you to do it. Don't let your sin or past sin stand in the way of that. There's an answer to sin and it's forgiveness and God does that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We don't need to punish ourselves there. That's good. Oh. So what are some things that you see that prevent men from leading well spiritually? I think I've seen some guys that start off really well and then they get distracted or something happens and they get off track. And I think, and then when they do, it's like, it's hard to get back on. And what I say, you know, if, if you start out and you're leading well, and all of a sudden you get off track for a few days, get back on. It, it's okay. It, it's a process of doing that. I think it does, um, not knowing where to start sometimes. And I think some of the things we've talked about can help with that. I think, um, and then I think, you know, not being, it, not being intimidated by our wives, not being intimidated by, by other men, you know, and that as a wife, you know, you can tell your husband you want to leave spiritual, but don't say, well, Bob and Bill, don't you see what they're doing? Don't you see how well they're leading? Don't compare him to someone else because what, how God uses him to lead you and your family spiritually may be different than Bob or Bill, you know, because your needs may be different and God's going to equip him perfectly to lead you. And so I, th I think all those things kind of go up. There's probably a lot of other reasons, you know, if we had every guy that's listening to this could, could text us right now and tell us there'd probably be a lot of reasons, but I, but I think what I'd want to say in that, whatever is keeping you, there's an answer to that and there's a way out. So you can lead spiritually. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think a big one for a lot of guys is distractions. I think oh yeah, we just get distracted so easily. You know, men and women both uh, just get distracted. And so, you know, there's other things that you could be doing than investing in some of these spiritual disciplines that are going to help you lead well spiritually. And then I think you brought up a really good point of just the not feeling worthy. I think sin, I think sin sometimes, you know, if yep. we're holding on to sin, we feel like we're not good enough to come back to God. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's ample grace for us. And so we can do that. And I think sometimes if we can't do it perfect, we don't want to do it at all. And that's like such a silly mindset. Cause you're right. It's progress over perfection. And so, you know, Absolutely. even when you fail, like keep, keep at it, like don't, don't give up, just keep, keep pushing and keep striving and embrace that forgiveness and, and walk in that. And then I think on the other side of that, I think sometimes men and women, um, when it comes to this, uh, like sin when, it, when we refuse to let go of it, you know, like mm -hmm. it, it is really hard to lead your, you are going to have a hard time leading your wife spiritually and leading your family spiritually if you're holding on to a sin and you don't want to let go. And I think there's this aspect of, you know, of the enemy pulling you closer. Yeah. Um, and also just, you know, that if you dive into God's word and you start leading your family spiritually, you're going to have to stop doing some of the things that, you know, 
are wrong and you know it's sin and you don't want to let go of it um, and you selfishly like kind of want to hold on to that and you've got to let let that go and do the work of that and let the invite the holy spirit in to to help you overcome that sin and so i think that's a, another another side of it that i've seen in different families no i think you're right and i i think for for guys i mean just know that your life's gonna be so much better when you deal with that sin and let go of it. Um, and, and you'll, you'll be so thankful that you did, I promise you on the other side of it. Um, so don't let that stand in the way yeah, at all. I, definitely. And you're not alone. We've all been there. I've done yeah. this. I've, I've, I've chosen to hold tightly onto sin instead of embracing grace and walking in the light. I've, I've sat in darkness yeah. on purpose, on purpose when I knew I shouldn't, I've done it. We've all done it. And so don't Absolutely. let that shame or fear, get a hold of you realize we're all sinners. We've all fallen short the glory of God. And there's no like level of that fallenness. We're all the equal amounts of fallen. And so walk in that, get accountability, tell someone, confess it, confess it to God, confess it to someone else and, and start to make those steps into the light. And know that the forgiveness is always there. My, brought to mind a, a older pastor I, I counseled one time and he had a, had a sin that he had had overcome but it was the, the shame of it and he wouldn't tell anybody about it and he didn't feel god it, it, what he couldn't didn't verbalize it. basically he was saying god you can't forgive me of that and i said so if somebody comes to you for counseling and they tell you that sin what are you gonna tell them I said, oh confess god will forgive you and i said why are you different than that and i think sometimes we don't think that god can forgive us it, it is jesus died for every sin of every one of us you were no different it wasn't there wasn't an asterisk and said Jesus died for every sin except for the ones that Kim Kimmerling commits, and he just didn't die for him. No, that's a lie. And so don't let Satan get you to believing that. Whatever you've done in the past, there's forgiveness for it. Nothing. There's no sin that Jesus doesn't cover. Yeah, yeah. And I love that what you asked that pastor of just like, what would you tell someone else? Because so often, like our our judgment gets so clouded by our own like just faulty thinking and Satan, I think, of just yeah. like, like yeah. we talk to ourselves and we believe things about ourselves that we would never tell someone else to believe about themselves. Like, why do we do that? But it's so true. If you just turn the question around and say, you know, well, what would you tell say to a friend? Exactly. It's a totally different answer. Why is that? It is. I, I don't know. I think we're just probably some of it is deceit of the enemy. And I, I don't know. I think we just whether it's just maybe probably maybe a lot of it is just not fully understanding God's grace and love that it's, it is too good to be true, but it's true. You know, it, it really is. When you think about it, you think how in the world could God do that? How in the world could he send his son to die for us? How could he forgive me of these things? You know? And, and so I think it is overwhelming because we, you know yourself better than anybody knows you. And so, but the one who knows you better than that is God. And he's yeah. also knows the answers to that. So yeah, don't get caught up in that. Every sin is forgivable. And part of it is just that mindset. And I think we all get, like you said, Christina, we all get into it. We all can think, well, yeah, I can counsel people and tell them to do this. And I think, well, you know, uh, you know I don't think I got, I, God can't forgive me of that yeah. you know, whatever, you know, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, this has been a cool conversation. I hope this encourages a lot of guys who are just dealing with this issue where they, you know, their wife wants them to lead spiritually and maybe they don't know where to start or they haven't done it or they don't want to do it. Uh, what final thought or do you have for our listeners today about this topic, Dr. Kim? Well, I hope in some ways we've redefined it for guys that, that really just pray, ask God to help you. You're not going to screw it up. If you're asking God to help you, your heart is to, to lead your family spiritually. You're not going to screw it up and just begin to take it a day at a time and enjoy the ride. Enjoy what God teaches you and enjoy looking at the fruits of your labors day after day and then year after year. You will never, ever regret taking that step. Yeah, that is so good. And I love that you remind us that all you need to do is to lean into God because that is so true. Like God hasn't called us to walk out spiritual disciplines perfectly or to lead perfectly. Yeah. He's, at, he's called us to worship. That's it. So yep just worship God, just commune with God, worship God. You won't regret it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, next week on the podcast, we're going to be talking all about confession in marriage. It's not something that is talked about enough and certainly not something that is done enough specifically in marriages, but confession is a huge part of the Christian faith. So Dr. Kim and I have found this to be incredibly useful and healing in our own marriages. And we are excited to talk all about that next week. So be sure to come back for the podcast next week. And Hey, as always, if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We love hearing from you. We love praying for you specifically. 
You can always email us at info at awesomemarriage.com or you can message us on Instagram. And if you enjoy the show, don't forget to leave a rating and review wherever you listen. It is the best way to show your support of the show and to let more couples know about the show. So have a great day and do something awesome for your marriage today.